So today we're going to be recreating this 200 week moving average heat map in Python. And you know, this chart is generally used to identify periods where we're overextended or to identify regions of support during a bear market. And so as you can see, it's held up quite well. If you sold at the red dots and bought at the blue dots, you would not be doing too badly now. Obviously, you know, this trend might not continue. Bitcoin might do something weird. But it's helpful to have this kind of indicator. How do we make one for ourselves? Well, the first thing we're going to need is a source of data. I found that the best one is this one from Quandle. So if you just type in Bitcoin market price, uh, USD, Quandle, you'll get this page. You do need to sign up for an account before it will let you download the data. But you don't need a credit card or anything. And you can just use a throwaway email. And so once you've downloaded that, you can load up Python. Let's do vi tutorial.py and make sure you copy the name of your CSV, whichever you want to call it. And let's get going. So the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to import pandas as PD. If you don't have any of these installed, you will obviously need to install them with pip. And so the first thing we're going to do is your df is equal to pd.read underscore csv and then just copy in the name of our csv and then let's print that out to make sure that actually read properly there we go so the first thing that you'll probably notice is that the values are the wrong way around if we were to plot the zero row there then the first row then the second row our price data would actually be the wrong way around. It would start with the newest data first and then go to the oldest data, which is not something that we want when we're plotting financial data. So we need to reverse this data frame. And one nice way of doing that is with eloc. So if you say df is equal to df.eloc, and then give eloc a slice of minus one, so this is exactly the same as you reverse a list in Python. You could slice into it like this. You can do the same thing with the data frames. So if we print that out now, we see that everything's been reversed and to us, that's now the right way around. So the next thing that we'll do is we'll calculate the 200 week moving average. So we'll just leave that as a new column on the data frame. So DF 200 week moving average. And we'll set that equal to DF value dot rolling window equals 1400 not 14,000 dot mean and so what does this line of code do so it takes the value column from the data frame it then grabs the previous 1400 entries if they exist and then it takes the mean of all of them and so what will happen is for the first 1400 entries of our data frame this column is not going to have an entry and so what i'm going to do to deal with that is i'm just going to trim those 1400 columns off um, you don't have to you could leave them in you could plot in the data without the 200 week moving average price displayed as well um, but i'm just going to trim those off to avoid any trouble so df is equal to df and then we'll just do a slice here, 1400 to the end. And then the third thing that we need to do is we need to grab the dates. And we're going to use the function pd.2 underscore date time. Essentially, we use this because if you were to just plot the dates values against the value values um, in matplotlib, uh, something like matplotlib would not read the dates as dates it would read them as strings and you would have a, a very very bad time the graph just wouldn't work and so it's important that you put this line in and then we plot dates against value rather than just the date column of the original data frame okay now that we've got that um what's next the next we're gonna just plot some data down that we've got so let's do let's first import matplotlib so import matplotlib dot pi plot as plt 
And then we'll do plt dot semi log y. So we're going to do this means a graph that is logarithmically scaled in the y axis, but not in the x axis. And then we'll plot dates versus df value. And then do a plt dot show. See what that looks like. I have misspelt matplotlib. A few little misspellings there, but in the end we got there. Nice boring chart of the Bitcoin price over time. So what are we going to do to make this more interesting? The first thing we're going to do is going to plt.style.use and then we're going to use dark underscore background. That just makes things look a little bit nicer, in my opinion. There we go. Next thing we're going to do is we're just going to plot the 200 week moving average against the dates range that we have. So semi log y dates d f 200 week moving average. We're also going to select some different colors because I'm not a fan of the ones that matplotlib map is choosing there. So we're going to say gray for the first one. You can of course choose your own colors. And then the purple for the second one. Have a look at that. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so the, the last piece of the puzzle now is to get the scatter plot working and the color bar at the side. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to use the plt.scatter function to draw the scattered plots. But we need to build up the elements that we're going to use as arguments to this function. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take a monthly slice out of our data frame. So we're just going to take a slice every 30 days. So to do that, you can just do this. So here we were taking it minus one at a time. So we were going backwards through the whole thing. This time we're stepping through the data frame 30 at a time. And so we'll get about one entry per month. Obviously, you know, sometimes that'll change because months aren't exactly 30 days long, but good enough for our purposes. And then what we need to do is we need to establish a metric for how red each dot is going to be. And so for that, I'm just going to use the monthly rate of increase, uh, as we saw on the other graph. And so to actually implement that, let's create a variable called it alkaline distance. And we'll set that equal to monthly 200 week moving average. And then we'll use the dot percent change function, which comes, comes with pandas. And then we'll multiply that by 100 because by default it gives us it as a decimal. Okay, now that we've got that, let's fill in the arguments to our plt.scatter. So the first thing we're going to put in here is the sort of x values. That's going to be monthly dates. And then the y values are just going to be monthly value. That makes sense, right? Because they sit on top of the price chart for Bitcoin. Now it gets more interesting. We're going to select a C value. So this is our distance variable. Um, as you, as I mentioned earlier, it's just a measure of how red or otherwise colored the plots are going to be. And so we have to choose a color map and that will tell Python which color a higher or a lower color is supposed to map to. You can look on the documentation. There's lots of different color mappings. I'm going to use rainbow because that's the closest to the chart that we just saw. And then we can also select a V min and a V max. This is optional. I just think it makes things look nicer. It essentially restricts the range by of colors that we can use. And so it gives you like more color variation in a strange way. You can try it without and you'll, you'll see what I mean. Okay, so let's see what this looks like. 
course, I didn't set the monthly variable there. There we go. Perfect. So one obvious flaw in this diagram is that the dots are behind the line graph here. So to do that, all you have to do is set a Z order variable in here. So we'll set Z order equals one here. Then we'll set Z order equals two. And the higher the value, the further forwards it is. So the closer it is to you. So if we set Z order equal to three in here, then the dots will be above the line. There we go. Perfect. So the last thing we need to add in here is the color bar on the side. And so the easy way to do that is you just do plt dot color bar. And there we go. That's as easy as that. Uh, there are a few more tweaks that we're going to make. We're going to add a label to this color bar. And we're also going to shift it to the left hand side so that it's much more like the one on looking to bitcoin.com. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually name this. We're going to set this equal to C bar. And then we're going to do C bar dot set label. And then just say percent increase in 200 week moving average and monthly increase moving average yeah and then let's see what this looks like as you can see the labels on the right there doesn't look particularly amazing so what i'm going to do is i'm going to move it to the left so we're going to do c bar dot axis dot y axis dot set underscore label underscore position and then we'll set that as left okay and then if we run that there we go there's our final result we have a nice graph by which we can try and identify zones for accumulation of bitcoin and areas where it might be dangerous to hold a, a high percentage of a net worth in bitcoin so with that have fun